Good morning. Good morning. Happy Wednesday morning to you. My name is Tony Taylor and I'm coming to you from Fort Mill, South Carolina, and I'm going to share my devotion, pray with you and for you and lift up some gratitude this morning. I am so glad that you are here. I had a, a strange error message when it first started. I had to restart. So, um, I apologize for uh, a little bit of a delay. I'm going to be reading some this morning from the Book of Common Prayer, a liturgy for ordinary radicals. And today is May the 11th. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Exalt yourself above the heavens, God, and your glory over all the earth. Exalt yourselves above the heavens, God, and your glory over all the earth. Good morning, Rhonda. So glad to see you this morning and praying for you. Good morning, Alan and Jean Wilkie. So glad to see you and praying for you. Morning, Sarah. So glad to see you and praying for you. What a glorious day it is here today in Fort Mill. The weather's been nice and a little bit cooler, but really nice. <clears throat> the Old Testament today, oh wait, first let me read the psalm. Um, if you have prayer requests or prayer concerns, um, and I want us to continue, continue to p pray for Kimberly Clay, and um, Clara has a prayer request this morning for Molly, um, so I uh, don't want to forget that. Um, let me read the psalm. Exalt yourself above the heavens, O God, and your glory over all the earth. My heart is firmly fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and make melody. Wake up, my spirit. Awake, Luke and heart. I myself will awaken the dawn. I will confess you among the peoples, O Lord. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is greater than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Exalt yourself above the heavens, God, and your glory over all the earth. Good morning, Loni. So good to see you this morning and praying for you. The um, Old Testament reading today is in Numbers. And before I do that, I want to lift up Kimberly. You're helping with a prayer bead workshop this Sunday. Um... Lord, in your mercy, we lift up the family of David Dalton, Lord. We lift him up, his family up, Lord, to you. Be with his family and comfort them, Lord. Let them feel your love. Let them feel your um, support and encouragement during this time. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, lifting up Rhonda Gillum today, uh, lifting her up in her prayer bead ministry, <clears throat> that she feel your presence, Lord, and she feels your Holy Spirit within her as she shares this wonderful ministry with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we lift up Kimberly Clay. We lift her up today with colon cancer, Lord, and surgery yesterday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for Kimberly. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. All right, the Old Testament reading is Numbers 14, 26 through 45. <clears throat> Good morning, Kimberly. We have been praying for you. Um, let us know if there's a specific prayer concern. I lifted you up this morning um, for the surgery yesterday and the colon cancer. But if there's something else that you would like us to lift up in prayer, um, please share that with us so we can be specific in our prayers. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long will this wicked community grumble against me? I have heard the complaints of those grumbling Israelites, so tell them, As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I heard you say. In the, this wilderness your bodies will fall. Every one of you, twenty years old or more, who was counted in this census and who has grumbled against me, not one of you 
Not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifted hand to make your home, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. As for your children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. But as for you, your bodies will fall into this wilderness. Your children will be shepherds here for 40 years, suffering for your unfaithfulness, until the last of your bodies lies in the wilderness for 40 years. One year for each of the 40 days you explored the land. You will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will surely do these things to this whole wicked community, which is banded together against me. They will meet their end in this wilderness, and here they will die. So the men Moses had sent to explore the land who returned and made the whole community grumble against him by spreading a bad report about it. These men who were responsible for spreading the bad report about the land were struck down and died of a plague before the Lord. Of the men who went to explore the land, only Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephunneh survived. When Moses reported this to all the Israelites, they mourned. They mourned bitterly. Early the next morning, they set out for the highest point of the hill country, saying, Now we are ready to go up to the land the Lord promised. Surely we have sinned. But Moses said, Why are you disobeying the Lord's command? This will not succeed. Do not go up, because the Lord is not with you. You will be defeated by your enemies. As for the Amalekites and Canaanites, they will face you there. Because you have turned away from the Lord, he will not be with you, and you will fall by the sword. Nevertheless, in their presumption, they went up toward the highest point on the hill country, though neither Moses nor the ark of the Lord's covenant moved with from the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived in the hill country came down and attacked them and beat them down all the way to Hormah. That's where we're going to stop today. Lord, in your mercy, we're lifting up Kimberly Clay for complete healing, Lord. Complete healing so she can take her next step of chemo. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Good morning, Clara. <clears throat> I want us to lift up Molly um, as Molly goes through cancer treatments. And um, Clara's been right there beside her. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up Clara and Jean and Molly during this time, Lord, of this time of cancer treatment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. The New Testament reading today is in Luke. <clears throat> Luke 6, 12 through 26. One of these days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated as apostles. Simon, who, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over, the, all over Judea, from Jerusalem and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and be healed of their diseases. These troubled by impure spirits were cured. And the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Now looking at his disciples, Jesus said to them, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, 
and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how the ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. And that ends our reading in the New Testament today. Um, gratitude. It's talking about being grateful and letting, letting you know that whatever you have now is enough. It's enough. Um, and Jesus' healing power spread and he was flocked with people and in many ways, it may have hindered him from doing the um, teaching and the um, preaching the word. Uh, he was so um, overwhelmed by people. We are overwhelmed by people. Uh, many times we are overwhelmed. They may not be asking for us to heal, but they're taking our time and our energy and a good, in good ways. Uh, we just have to always try to keep a balance of listening and supporting others, and still learning and feeding ourselves. Um, these, these verses that I read that Jesus said here in Luke are also recorded in Matthew, and many call them the Beatitudes. Um, and the Beatitudes mean the blessing, the blessing. Um, and so, if that sounded familiar in Luke, it's because it, it was also written um, in uh, Matthew uh, 5 through 7, um, the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, the hunger here, some of these words, I wonder if they're metaphors for, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. And I don't think that means just poor, like, money-wise, money and who are hungry, those who want the Spirit, who want to grow in their relationship with Christ. Uh, but this connection with the Old Testament, the Old Testament, the people had gone against God, and now God, the Lord was telling them that they were going to wander a year for the 40 days they wandered, so 40 years, and that none of their None of them would go to the land of milk and honey. Their children would. The children they thought that would be um, uh, plunder in the wandering of the wilderness. And then they decided, well, we're, we're, we'll change our minds. We'll change our minds. We'll, we'll go up there now. We'll go up there now. We don't want to do the other thing. But God wasn't with them. The Lord was not with them. And so they were struck down. Um, how many times do we fail ourselves with doubts and we allow somebody else to persuade us with something that's not true? And then we have regret. We have regret after that. Um, we must learn from, from that. Um, we must learn from our regret when we do something that we later think, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Um, from that regret, we can learn to be a better person. We can learn to do things right. And, um, you know, it happens to us all. We all make mistakes. And we can beat ourselves up over it and just be unkind to ourselves. Um, we can have a pity party. We can have uh, just be grouchy and angry. Or we, we can say, all right, I made a mistake. I'm going to work hard not to do that one again. And I regret that I made that mistake. I see now that it's the wrong mistake. And I can now learn and go forward. And the mistake wasn't um, uh, just where you're not learning anything. I, I can't remember the word I'm trying to say. But we all make mistakes, and that's how we learn, and that's how we grow. But it's the people who just... Um, who make mistakes and blame it on others and don't accept it, um, what they're doing or what they did, and they um, 
ne never set with it, never never settle with what they did. They always just say, well, it's somebody else's fault. And they're not learning. They're not learning. We can learn from regret. Um, uh, mistakes mold and shape us into who we are. We aren't perfect. And um, it's even silly to think that who, who out there thinks they're perfect? Well, I, I know there are some people, but we aren't perfect. <clears throat> and, um, you know, this is a part of the challenge that we have if we trust. Um, if we trust and we make mistakes and we know that we are still loved, that we know we are still valued, that we are not um, worthless, <clears throat> our mistakes don't define us. We do. We do that. We have to accept our mistakes, overcome them, and be grateful for all that we have. If you ever doubt and are feeling like you're slipping into a pity party, you've got to stop and think all the things you're grateful for. All of them. Little things, big things, things that you, many of them you don't deserve or earned, they're given to you. So be thankful for all that you have. And the Beatitudes is really about that blessing. <clears throat> be Feel blessed for what you have. Um, and you have enough. And you are enough. Um, my mama always laughs at me. And she says, Tony Lee, you are enough. You are enough. Um, there was this lady at the a festival. And I've kept this one. I, I've given most of her other cards out. But it was just great. It says, you are enough. And I just... It's just a beautiful card um, where she had the, the daisy on it. You are enough. Reminds me, Mom, it reminds me that I am enough. And uh, I don't need five more classes or three more degrees or two more of anything. That God can use me just as I am. I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. You are enough. You are enough. And we can't solve all the problems of the world, but we can sure pray for them. We can pray for them. We can support each other and love each other and be kind to ourselves. Be kind to ourselves. So many of my clients, <clears throat> clients are so unkind to themselves. They are like just, you know, we're our worst critics in trying to help them stop the gremlins. And I really believe, I, this is me, this is Tony saying this, that these spirits demon spirits that Jesus, Jesus took out of people, all these evil spirits could very well be the evil spirits in our heads that tell us things that aren't true about ourselves. They want to stop us from doing what God is calling us to do. All those negative voices are really like evil spirits. And we need to ask Jesus. We need to ask Jesus to help get rid of those negative voices, cast out these demons, cast out these negative voices in our head so that we can do the things that God is calling us to do. It's holding us back. All of the negative voices that you can't do this, nobody's going to listen to you. You think that prayer bead ministry is going to be worthwhile? No. You know, all the negative things, you know, all the negative things that are in your head, ask God to let them go. Take them away. Cast them out so you can do what God is calling you to do. Free you up for that. I don't know where that all came from this morning, but um, I do believe it. I believe that when I see my clients and I see my friends all doubting, and, and I, I have to be held accountable for that too, that, you know, who, who's going to listen to me with this? Um, you know, God's calling us. And he named his 12 disciples and you are one of them. Your name might not be in the Bible from back then, but he made those disciples, those apostles, to go out and make more. He has called you to be disciples. We are his disciples. We have to deliver his message now. He sends us out to deliver the message, share our faith, let people know about Jesus Christ. He sent them out. And they made disciples, and that's what we are. We are disciples, and he's sending us out. And we have to let go of the negative voices so that we can truly be a disciple who transforms the world. One person 
one disciple, one apostle at a time. One apostle at a time. We can do this. We can do this. We are enough. We are blessed. We are children of God. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We can do this. We cannot worry, Rhonda, about pleasing other people. That's not what we're called to do. We're called to rattle some people, probably. We are called to please God. And that negative voice in your head about what are people going to think, you got to let it go. Ask God to let that voice go in your head. It's not about what other people think. Not at all. And you know all of that. You're going to ask for help to let that ne negative voice go about what other people think. We are not to compare ourselves with others. We are here to serve. We are here to serve. And if you're serving God, it doesn't matter what other people think. Who cares? Who cares? You know, that's their issue and their problem. And pray for them. So if you want to do something about the negative voices, you need to pray for the people that you are thinking may judge you. Pray for them that they won't judge you. Pray for them that they will accept what you're offering. Pray for them. Use your prayer and your prayer beads to uh, dismantle the judgment that you are assuming may come from other people. Use your prayer beads. Use your prayer beads. Use those prayer beads. I, I work with mine all day. Use those prayer beads. Let them help you to get rid of the negative voices in your head. Let them help you have confidence to step out of the boat. Let them help you know and remind you that God is with you and your brothers and sisters in Christ are with you. Use your prayer beads every day. Whenever you feel doubt, grab those beads up and know that the Holy Spirit is reminding you of who you are and that he's the Holy Spirit's sitting with you right there. And you don't have to worry about what other people think. You don't have to worry. Love you guys. We'll close this out with any other prayers. I'm sorry I got kind of long-winded this morning. Um, it just comes sometimes. Um, you are enough. Um, Francis de Sales, a 16th century bishop in France, wrote, Love you the poor and love poverty, for it is by such love that we, truly, we become truly poor. As the scripture says, we become like the things we love. If you love the poor, you will share their poverty and be poor with them. If you love the poor, be often with them. Be glad to see them in your own home and to visit with them in theirs. Be glad to talk to them and please to have them near you in church, on the street, and elsewhere. Be poor in conversing with them and speak to them as their companions do. But be rich in assisting them by sharing some of your abundant goods. Any other prayer requests this morning? Lord, turn our praises into hands that clothe the naked, arms that comfort the afflicted, tables that host the stranger, and shoulders that support the weary, so that your name may be praised by those who live and die with their backs against the wall. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into their doors. Amen. Amen. Happy Wednesday. As Anna James says, it is hump day. It's hump day. And I will see you tomorrow morning on Thursday at 830. Have a very blessed Wednesday. Share your gratitude and love. Love you guys. Bye.